Well, hello, perfect timing. I was going to have to start to sing. So welcome to the Sullivan County Drug Task Force meeting. This is the uh, first open meeting for this year. We have two open meetings every year where we invite members of the community and all of the uh, pillar participants, of which you all are in that group, up here um, on the dais, we have the distinguished leaders of the different pillars, and we will be going through a variety of updates on what the Drug Task Force has been doing specific to their area of expertise. I apologize in advance for my voice. With any luck, I'll lose it, and you'll all be saved. So <clears throat> I would start off by apologizing um, uh, acting DA Conady was supposed to be here heading the meeting um, today, but there is a very important uh, attempted murder trial going on and they just got called back into court, so he's not gonna be able to make it here. If he can, he will be, but I, I doubt it. Um, very important case going on here. We're hoping that uh, ADA Riley will be here in his spot in just a little bit. So <clears throat> I'm gonna speak briefly to the things that um, Brian was going to address. As a county, we have been, as you know, lowest sta uh, highest stats in the county for drug use, drug overdose outside of the metropolitan area. So we are considered a very, very hot spot to say the least. We have repeatedly for two years running applied for certification as a high intensity drug trafficking area and we've been turned down by the federal government. For those of you that have been watching the news, the legislative team, um, the people, our leaders, Aileen Gunther, uh, you know, our, our legislative group here have really been pulling out all the stops. If you follow the papers at all, you'll see that Senator Schumer has been very much in our corner. And I'd like to just take a moment, and I know she's going to kill me when I do this, <clears throat> but I'd just like to acknowledge Bernadette Wilton, who is our HIDA rep for the area. Bernadette has been absolutely fantastic. And also, I see her zipping around, the lovely Miss Camille, who has paid a real big part in the application process, and also Jill Hubert simon who's been wonderful in getting us the stats and pulling this all together. So we are on tender hooks right now. We're putting the final, uh, the final touches on the application, and hopefully it will go down to the DEA for review, and, and then before it gets submitted. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I was confident last time. I'm more confident this time. We had, um, thanks to S Senator Schumer, we had people up here from Washington that were helping us look. Uh, coroner's office, I've got to say, Ellen Kasten was eloquent at the meeting that we had, speaking about the needs of the community, law enforcement, everyone, uh, Steve, everybody was there contributing to this conversation um, that we had with all the heads of uh, HIDA, pretty much. So we're confident about that. Also, uh, COSUP, and you know what? I'm, I hate to do this, but I'm going to pop this right to you. Um, Chief Degada, if you want to just give a little COSAP update and explain what COSAP is to the group. Yeah, sure. So a uh, stream of funding that uh, we re recently received working with Hope Not Handcuffs. Um, it's going to be expanding the training for law enforcement to take the good work that we've already accomplished with the Hope Not Handcuffs program on directing individuals suffering with substance use disorder to treatment uh, and expanding upon that program. Uh, specifically, we're doing a lot of good work uh, with establishing a quick response team. So this is a team of a law enforcement officer, a peer recovery coach, and a family coach uh, that once the team is established, it will respond to individuals who have experienced non-fatal overdoses somewhere between 24 and 72 hours after the incident and try and uh, connect them with treatment. So there's a lot of good things going on with that. Absolutely. And for those of you who know um, Annette Carson, I don't know if she's on the Zoom, uh, they were going to try to attend via Zoom. There's been a change in the in the Hope Not Handcuffs structure, and do you want to do the introduction for? Yep. So uh, Paul Ricard, I don't know, is he on the Zoom or? He might be. He may be frantically waving and saying, "I'm here," and we're not letting him in. So uh, he's a former chief with the town of Mount Hope Police Department and a longtime partner with Hope Not Handcuffs. So we're very excited to have him uh, as the director of Hope Not Handcuffs. 
and we've got a lot of great things coming up the pipeline as far as training for law enforcement and expanding the program. And they also just appointed a new coordinator to coordinate all the events. Prior, uh, prior to this time and to this funding through COSAP, Annette Cars has really been uh, juggling the entire process with, with some help, but not, not uh, really designated and funded help. And now this will bring more strength and more infrastructure to what they're doing. And they just appointed, and I would love to tell you her name, but I have to tell you, it flew out of my head, a woman that's going to be specifically um, looking over all events in the area so that they can participate and more actively get out into the community. Um, in Sullivan County, there are about 36 volunteer angels. Are there any volunteer angels in the room? Please raise your hand. I'm a volunteer angel. Maureen is a volunteer angel. This is a process that if you're, you're sitting home and you're saying, what is it I can do? I want to help. I strongly encourage you to reach out. You can reach out to my office. You can go to Tri-County Partnership and get the information and register to be a Hope Not Handcuffs angel. And what you do as an angel is when someone shows up at a PD and says that they want help, a call goes out to the angel. An angel responds usually within less than 30 minutes and walks the person through the process. And it's a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, very rewarding, very rewarding um, role to really help someone on the road to recovery. So, okay. Thank you, Brian, for that contribution. All right, now, uh, we're gonna talk about the things that I was going to address. I'd like to, oh, this wasn't very nice. I, can you just pass those around? This is the, when we, when we first came up with our drug task force, you want to tell the guys in the back, please? Um, so the, we have a pillar structure because there's no, there's no one discipline that can address the opioid situation. So we divided many hands make light work. We divided it into pillars, bringing content experts, and those are the people you see up here. We said at that time when we designed the task force, and I have to give a shout out to the legislators who stood up, and especially Mr. Doherty, who stood up and fought for us to get the task force on board and get it up and running. Um, we have a financial pillar, which is a brand new pillar, and we'll be introducing those new pillar leads momentarily. We have a medical providers pillar, a hope and prevention pillar, United Sullivan, <clears throat> policy reform, law enforcement, treatment programs, uh, and the CARES pillar, which is perinatal and moms, and uh, which was the newest pillar until the financial pillar came, a veterans pillar. So you'll be hearing from all those uh, people with their summaries. And the newest, as I said, the newest addition is now um, the financial pillar, because for those of you that follow in the news, there's a lot of opioid settlement money coming in, and the management of that opioid settlement. It's great to have all the money, but you really have to manage it, and manage it carefully. So we bring in content experts, and you want to introduce yourselves? I think you can just talk. No? You have a sticky uh, st Button sticky. Uh, my name is Jared Dash. I work for social services. Okay. <laughs> yeah, in the back. You just let them know. Okay, so, and Annette is trying to get in. I was right. They were waving their hands frequently, uh, frantically. All right. So those are our new pillar leads. Um, we're very excited about pulling that all in together. We also did eliminate one of the pillars, which was the data pillar. And it's, uh, we met as a pillar lead group, and the pillar lead group decided that each pillar would be responsible for their own data, uh, their identification of an indicator, and their monitoring of an indicator. So that's what we're going to be doing. I would also like to welcome new members of the Drug Task Force. And the newest group to join is Ellenville Regional Hospital. They are now active members of our drug task force. We're very excited to have them at the table with us. I hope they're not on trying to wave and get into the Zoom as well as we speak. But they are, have been very active, and we're excited about having them here. Because you know, it, previously, we kind of you know, used the delineation of Sullivan County. And we know that that's not, you know, who pays attention to this is, you know, you're leaving Sullivan County, now you're in Orange. This goes across the whole area, so we're trying to make this more regional outreach, and it gives more strength to what we're doing. 
The next thing I'd like to talk about, and I know that Jill is going to go into this a little bit further when we talk, is we're really, really excited uh, partnering with Bold Gold. We started a Bold Gold Narcan challenge. And our charge is to get Narcan, more Narcan out into the community. And we have, the goal is in six weeks, we want to get over 102 people trained in Narcan, and we're looking for organizations. A lot of promotion going out on Bold Gold Radio and the Bold Gold Media. So if you're a member of an organization, and we have how many? I think there's six already that have signed up um, to get Narcan trained. It's going to be a wonderful thing. You get recognition with Bold Gold, and we'll keep you updated as that process goes on. And also, again, I want to extend invitations to community members. This is your task force. This is our county coming together and looking at, at the situation, the drug situation. I get probably two or three calls a week from folks that say, what are we doing? We want to do something. I want to be involved. And this is where I in invite them to come in. As you'll hear from the pillar leads, they have specific projects that they're working on. So you as a volunteer get the opportunity to pick the project that you really have a passion for and get actively involved and be part of the solution. OK, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce, so we're very honored to have Senator Oberacher here. Senator Oberacher is the ranking member of the Alcohol and Substance uh, Disorder Committee for the state of New York. Senator Robert, you want to come up here, or are you come wherever you're comfortable? I'm really comfortable right here, that's, that's good. okay. Thank you all. <laughs> um, Wendy, thank you, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, great to be here. Um, great to be a part of what y'all are, going back to some of my, my Texas uh, uh, influences, y'all are doing a great job, um, and, and, and a job that, of course, um, we can all agree is um, the end result is worthwhile. Um, one of the challenges that I have um, seen and, and, and I guess before me is um, we have this, uh, sup well, I won't say supposed, but we have a, a, a source of revenue stream, if you will, and um, there are more, there's more need than revenue. So my goal, and especially in the 51st Senate District, which I would like to welcome everyone uh, in Sullivan County to, um, is to not only advocate, but more importantly, to work on getting what funding, where it needs to go, and then more importantly, how does it need to get there? And, and, and I'm here today, uh, the term that I use is I, I use what I call the God rule. God gave me two ears and one mouth, and he meant for me to listen twice as much as talk. So for me today, it's, it's extremely important to listen, um, to digest what is going to come out of this uh, task force, and then more importantly, bring that back to Albany and, and to see then set a plan in place, get the much needed funding. Uh, I was just talking today to um, uh, some folks again too. Um, Sullivan really is in, in, in a very unique uh, position, and, and what I mean by that is not that I don't have need in the other six counties that I represent, but definitely Sullivan has, I think, a, a, um, not only a higher need, but just if we can make it work here, is the term I'll use, I can make it work, or we can make it work anywhere. So I'm really excited about uh, the task force, the structure of it, uh, the pillar system I think is absolutely amazing. Um, my relationship with our new chair, which is uh, Senator Fernandez, is one that um, we kind of picked up where uh, Senator Harkum, Peter Harkum, who was chairing it before, uh, even though we're on uh, you know, different sides of the aisle, if there was ever a bipartisan committee, it's this. And we had a, uh, I th would consider a great working relationship, and that's carried over to Senator Fernandez as well. And then again, more importantly, I'm also going to be traveling down to, um, to actually tour the harm reduction centers that are, that are being proposed. Um, I feel as a legislator, how can I legislate effectively if I don't understand and see the process in place? So I will be going down, um, hopefully after budget. Hopefully we'll have our budget out by April 1st, although, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rob's, Rob's uh, 
uh, chuckling, and, and rightly so. It, it may be a little later, but I, but I really feel like we, uh, we're going to be making some, some huge headway uh, this week. And, uh, and then what I'd like to do, if, if, it, it, if at all possible, is maybe to come back and or through some uh, pre-agreed upon form of communication, let you know what I found at the harm reduction uh, centers and, and to go from there. Again, thank you doesn't cover uh, everything that you're doing, but I, I will say that. Um, I, you're inspiring me to uh, not only rededicate myself, but to focus myself in on the challenges that we have. So with that, I'm going to institute the God rule and shut up and listen. So thank you all uh, again for all you're doing. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Oberecker. We will have time for questions at the end of today's meeting. Um, next, I'm going to turn the floor over to Aileen Gunther's team. Aileen will be here in a little bit, but until she does get here, um, these meetings have been so consistent, Wendy, um, and everyone meeting separately and then coming together like this. And we really see the progress and the offshoots that are coming from the pillar lead meetings, um, working with the hospital, with the police departments, um, with you know overall crisis intervention. Um, and it, it really trickles down to more than just addiction. It's mental health. It's making sure people are fed, um, meeting them where they are. So um, there's a lot that's coming of this meeting that I don't think we even intended. And we're so happy to be a part of it. Um, Aileen's fighting, as you know, to always bring money back into the district and make sure that we're made whole. And that's a big goal for her this year, as it's been every year. Um, and I know once she gets here, she's going to have much to say. Um, so um, thank you for letting us be a part of it. And we look forward to continuing to work with all of you. Thank you very much, Rachel. You're welcome. We're just going to do a little. OK, thank you. There they are. Hi, Annette. <laughs> OK. All right, so let's go right. And I see that Sheriff Schiff came in and thought that I didn't see him behind the pillar, but I do. <laughs> yeah. So, Sheriff, sure, you want to come up and just give us a little bit of an overview? I know you have Hal with you also, so the uh, the jail update is there, and then we also have Chief Tagato, who's in his appropriate seat. I guess we need a bigger pillar. Uh, Law enforcement has been working together. We're going to up our efforts. We've been working with John Little in the county to get some of the opioid uh, reimbursement money, their settlement money, uh, to buy equipment that we can use towards uh, taking down some of these drug dealers and breaking up some of these uh, narcotic rings. Uh, we will be stepping up our game. We've been working together with the state police, uh, several of the federal, the uh, Homeland Security, state police, through uh, Safe Street Task Force. Uh, through the DA's office and uh, we're going to be upping our game for the summer the weather warms up and things heat up and uh, we'll be trying to do our part uh, I don't know if Steve do you have anything to add to that yeah so uh, I think the sheriff and I have had a lot of conversations about uh, as we have with our other partners in law enforcement uh, on the criminal investigation side of trying to disrupt these drug trafficking organizations is we're getting laser focused on the individuals that are selling drugs that are causing people to suffer from non-fatal and fatal overdoses. So we're making sure that we allocate the resources that we do currently have and really funneling them into the people that are causing the most harm in the community. Um, and then on the, uh, the other side of the coin, we have the harm reduction and the outreach work, uh, working with, I see, uh, now I see Paul Ricard and Annette Cars on the Zoom there. Uh, so we've got a lot of great things going on, especially with the district attorney's office, uh, where we're taking the diversion and deflection programs through Hope Not Handcuffs at the police officer level, and now moving that up to the level where an assistant district attorney has the ability to take a case and move it uh, from the criminal justice system into a deflection, into treatment. Um, so a lot of good things going on. Yeah. And, also, and also the funding from HIDA will help also with the intelligence and the, um, the data 
and a data analyst, crime analyst also. No, absolutely. The uh, technology we could get the manpower, the overtime, uh, will be incalculable. Uh, that's what we need. Uh, John Little's been instrumental in trying to get us moving some money. The DA wanted to move it from one use uh, to another for overtime. If we can do that and we can get this overtime built in, which John has been working on, uh, that'll be a multiplier. That will allow us to have the police departments and local PDs that don't have the overtime budget to keep people on an investigation or assign them to an investigation to assist us. And that will just uh, help us countywide. Uh, as I said, incalculable, I don't know what else to say. That'll be a major game changer. And uh, if that works the way I hope it would work, we'll probably be going to the legislature or somewhere else, the senator, to Aileen, to somebody for funding to keep that going, because I think it's gonna wind up being very, very important. Is that something? It shouldn't be, because we're gonna do questions at the end. Okay. So, I, but I, I just, I have to thank you uh, collectively and all the law enforcement members because you guys really do a phenomenal job. And I think that, you know, when you look at what happens um, in other counties and, you know, everybody works hard, but you guys really go above and beyond. Absolutely. Yeah. I have to say that, and I've probably said this before, but it just seems to be getting better. The police agencies are working together. They understand as a group, a cooperative effort, we're much more effective than working separately. And I think we've been seeing the fruits of that, uh, sharing equipment, sharing manpower, sharing intelligence. Uh, there's no way to get around it. That's what's gonna make the difference in this war on drugs, the war on crime. So we're uh, still doing our part. Thank you, Wendy. Thank, Thank you. you. And as part of that, I'd like to, and I don't care if he's behind a poll or not, um, Hal, do you, uh, Chief Smith, do you want to come up and just give an update with some of the things that's happening? Because you're really, your team is doing some phenomenal work in the jail and, you know, reaching out far above what other uh, correctional facilities are doing. And I think you deserve to talk about the wonderful things you're doing. Yeah, actually, for a small, uh, small time jail, we, we are pretty progressive when you look around at what some of the bigger jails with more resources are doing. So just to uh, finalize some of the numbers, since October of last year, we've done 130 evaluations on folks in our facility. Um, out of those evaluations, we've enrolled 65. Uh, we have released 40 of those people to the street, and when they got released to the street, they had some sort of follow-up and programming. So they just weren't left on their own. Uh, currently, we have 25 active people out of 110, that kind of is a good sign that mm -hmm. less than a quarter of the population is on the program, right? So maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel here. You would think that in a jail setting that it would be a greater number than less than a quarter. But out of those 25, we have 15 on Suboxone, one on Subutex, four on Methadone, and five on the, old, the Trexone. And, um, you know, we're, we're continuing with our education. We're trying to get the, uh, get down the piece on uh, the training for the Narcan so they have that when they're released. And uh, we're moving forward. Right. And you really have done a phenomenal, phenomenal job because the folks that we speak to when we do interviews for folks that help us with our promotions and things like that, so many people say that being in the correctional system, like it or not, is the thing that, that, that got them into treatment and helped keep them into treatment. And through the jail committee that we have and you know, uh, working with drug court uh, and the communication absolutely has gotten so much better. And it's really, it's really a, like I said, it's something that pe a lot of people don't think about unless you see it on a daily basis. But when you speak to people that have been successful going through the program, it's a wonder, it's a, if you can say it's a wonderful thing, it's a wonderful thing. So well, thank you know, there was the old stigma that, uh, you know, jails are, we just throw you in a cell and it's a dark, dingy place and we don't care about you, where actually that's, that's not the case at all. Um, a lot of people that have come to jail, thank God they came to jail because it probably saved their life because yep. they're on a downhill spiral. And uh, we get them in there and we do the best we can to uh, get them on the right path. And after that, it's up to them. Yep, absolutely. Thank you very much, Chief. You're welcome.
Well, our lovely assembly member is here, so I'm going to divert from the agenda and turn it over to assembly member Gunther. Well, um, first of all, thank you for all you do, and Hal and Mike Schiff. You know, we really appreciate what you're doing and helping rehabilitate people and giving them a second chance, and that's exactly what you're doing. Um, I know that Rachel spoke for me earlier today, and um, I guess the message for me is, you know, I worked on a detox unit. I know that many of the people that you're working with, um, we have to have access to care, and I think that's what you're providing. And so you are changing the trajectory of what's happening in Sullivan County. And you know when they say it takes a village, well, it, it really does take a village, and mm -hmm. I want to thank all of you for what you do. You know, it doesn't go unnoticed, and it, it's really, um, Sullivan County is a special place. When there's a trouble in Sullivan County, we all come together and we try to fix what's broken, and that's exactly what you do. So I'm very honored to uh, represent you in Albany. Uh, Rachel and I and Matt are always here for you, and thanks again for what you're doing. Thank you, Aileen. Okay, so now let's go back to the agenda. Um, I don't see that Dr. Batson from the medical pillar was here, and I saw that Heather was here, but Heather, is there anything you'd like to share? Heather is a new co-chair of the pillar. It's really crummy of me to do this to you, but um, you're on the spot. So if you just wanna come up and say a few words, Heather is a nurse practitioner that many of you are familiar with. She's worked in the field of addiction for many years, and she stepped up to the plate to help lead the medical pillar with Dr. Batson. And where is he? I don't know. <laughs> so I actually spoke with him yesterday afternoon, and you know we were just talking about how the barriers, some of the barriers that were in existence as far as access and things, the hurdles that we were overcoming in the beginning are gone, which is, you know, incredibly awesome for us to be able to provide care and it makes it a lot easier I think now moving forward harm reduction is such a big focus for us as far as for you know educating the public on that and also our colleagues is you know a lot of people don't understand what that means and there's preconceived notions about what harm reduction really is um, and then just knowing what harm reduction means for each of our patients you know each patient is different so each patient is at a different point and how we can really approach them and establish that relationship with them and what's going to help them in reducing the harm well great no, thank you heather you're welcome i appreciate it no okay now we turn to hope and prevention ms hubert simon I th oh, there we go. <clears throat> um, so we got a, we have a lot going on. We continue with Narcan training, um, both boots on the ground and some of our education partners and training partners through Sullivan 180, Catholic Charities. Uh, so really working on increasing uh, Narcan access. Um, you will notice, I don't think it's been done yet, but uh, within the next couple of days, every AED box in county government buildings will now have stickers on them that say Narcan is available here, and there will be a Narcan kit available in all of those AED boxes. Uh, those got picked up today, uh, so that will be happening um, as, we, as we go along. Um, we're also uh, working with Bold Gold on it's the Ciliberto, Ciliberto and Friends Saving Friends Narcan campaign that Wendy referenced, um, and the goal really is to train over 102 people. Uh, we have some of those trainings are already set up, more people are registering, so uh, we're looking forward to doing that and getting those trainings done. Uh, we've also uh, been trying to get um, a screening of dead on arrival, which is a very poignant, very touching uh, documentary that was done on the real time, the real effects of fentanyl on families and of families in all different situations, how their loved ones died. Um, we do have a pilot screening that's going to be happening next week through the cooperation of BOCES, in which we're, we really targeted some school officials and people who have been working in the business. Um, we have roughly 20 people signed up for that, and then the goal for that is to um, get that message and get that uh, documentary out for more people to see what the real consequences of these fatal overdoses are and how they affect families um, and families who, it's all different circumstances. The, the drugs were delivered to their house. The, you know, Somebody bought it online. Um, I've watched it many times. I end up in tears every time, but it really is an important message. So we continue to work on that, getting that out. Um, our partners at Catholic Charities continue to work with our school districts on getting Too Good for Drugs program into the schools. 
Um, and unfortunately, Dawn couldn't be here with us today to give us some more information on that. Uh, we just completed a drug pickup or take back day. We collected over 80 pounds of medications uh, from our drug drop boxes, which are located in the uh, police agencies and in uh, family services. Uh, we continue to do those. We have those scheduled every two months, um, and those may increase depending on need. We are also looking, the DEA hosts a drug take back day in April. Uh, we are trying to get on board with that. We're having a little communication issue with the DEA, uh, but that would be another one where people can come and drop off um, their medications, not only at the drop boxes, but we'll set up some temporary ones too. So hopefully we'll um, have a resolution to that pretty quick so we can uh, offer that as well. Um, not really completely uh, prevention pillar related, but we are working on Health Fest, um, which is gonna be held June 4th. Um, we're looking for any of our community agencies and partners uh, that want a table to have that. That's gonna be in Liberty at Hanafi Park. Um, and it's really just to kind of let community members have a fun day, but also to let them know what resources are available in all the different sectors. So uh, those flyers are out. We're looking for more vendors if anybody um, is interested in that. Um, and I think that's about it for me right now. Okay, thank you, Jill. John, you want to talk about United Sullivan? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. John Little, Commissioner of Health and Human Services for the county, and leading the United Sullivan Pillar, which works to bring all the various community agencies that are around the county providing support, social care to our friends and neighbors, and supporting the families uh, that suffer alongside those who suffer from substance use disorder. Uh, we've been working for uh, you know, from, from the beginning uh, to, to be the, the community voice, the public voice, and the family's voice for the drug task force. Um, the effort is getting so big that we're splitting it off, and um, we didn't really do Ryan justice in the beginning, but Ryan Fuller heading up the uh, Vets Pillar, uh, and I see Carl is also on from the VA, Hudson Valley. So having a specific dedication to our vets is uh, important. Uh, and then... Uh, to my left here, Jared is, is my senior fiscal uh, accounting officer for uh, the uh, Department of Social Services. And uh, Jared is heading up the financial management pillar, as Wendy mentioned. And we're doing that because the opioid settlement funds that are coming into the county, um, while Senator Oberacker is correct, there's, there, there's, more, there's more coming in and there's never enough. Um, we, are, we are working hard to... Um, make the most of what we have and we've created this pillar because um, fortunately there are there are more companies coming in to settle We're, we are getting more support um, and it's created the good problem of we have a lot of um, we have a lot of issues to sort out to make sure that we're spending the money effectively so my biggest piece for today uh, in the public meeting is to make sure that folks know that we are actively looking for uh, ways to spend the settlement funds uh, in, the, in the new uh, budget year, which we started, our first budget year started uh, last June. Uh, so it will run through uh, the end of June this year. Uh, and that's all the things that we're talking about that we've been able to make happen over the course of last year. We have, we have a lot of opioid settlement money, uh, certainly to thank for that. Um, but we're, we're always looking for more ways to, to do the job, to do it better. Uh, and so we'll be, we'll be looking for um, members of the community uh, and voluntary agencies to come to us with their request for funding, with their with their um, you know uh, things they'd like to 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 take on and support the community, and uh, because because we have all these different pieces coming together, we actually talked about it. We had our we had our first meeting in the financial pillar uh, just a bit ago, and we'll be putting out public notice specifically to request these. Uh, inputs from the community to make sure we get as many inputs as we possibly can. Uh, and thanks to everybody who's already contributed to all that. Um, we have a very robust group in United Sullivan. We meet every Friday. And I wanted to give a shout out to some of the uh, the primary partners that, that are uh, with us. You know, every, every Friday we get together and we talk about what everybody's working on together, how we're feeding the community, how we're providing support to people with substance use disorder. Uh, and that group, uh, Catholic Charities of Orange, Sullivan, and Ulster, Action Toward Independence, Ulster Community Action, Sullivan 180, SALT, Cornell Cooperative, Independent Living, RSS, uh, and the community-oriented uh, folks of Garnet Health um, uh, are on our calls regularly, and we're talking about what we can do, what more we can do to support families uh, and friends of those suffering, and, and how we can 
how we can continue to help out. Um, and the big thing I want to, uh, to really um, call out and we're really excited about is we're, we're in the late stages of an RFP process to bring it, to create a digital social care network for Sullivan County. That's, uh, that might be, sound like a lot of big words mashed together, but uh, what, what this will do uh, through a vendor called Unite Us that we've been working with is we are going to have a closed loop referral system where somebody that is experiencing some kind of challenge in their life um, will be able to walk into any participating member of the network. And so you could walk into Catholic Charities with uh, everything from a toothache to not enough food in your, in your pantry at home. Uh, and Unite Us will give us the ability, will give Catholic Charities the ability to make referrals that even if they don't necessarily have um, you know, they get, they, they do provide a lot with food pantries actually. So I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing here, but, um, uh, but if there's a need that a specific agency can't fill, there will be automatic digital referrals to other partners in the network, uh, and, and appointments will be made, connections will be made and we will get data and feedback. So we'll be able to see where the gaps in our system are, our system of care so that we can bring more providers in. Hopefully, um, I actually, I, I really think this is going to revolutionize the way we care for our community around here and what we really like about this vendor in particular is that when we get this network established we in government uh, and healthcare providers pay to have seats in the network in the service uh, but our community-based organizations our nonprofits are able to join for free that's how the business model works so unite us will come in and they will bring everybody from holy harry's food pantry on up to catholic charities of orange sullivan ulster and action toward independence they're all going to be able to join this network for free and then you're connected in and receiving referrals uh, that are you know sustaining the agency and sustaining the community so we're really excited about this i hope to present it to the legislature next month the funding is aligned for it so we're uh, we're pretty excited to move forward on this one and that's that's the biggest news from united sullivan and that that is really very exciting and you know what john, uh, john you brought up an excellent point because lots of times i think it's good for us to to use examples such as john did to show you what the task force is really doing jill referenced too good for drugs that's money that's funded through the opioid settlement that's where it went um, we're working with engine uh, engine is a an offshoot of salt that is reaching out specifically to youth so they they requested and we're giving funding we uh, hope not handcuffs got funding through the opioid settlement money separate from the from COSUP and who am I forgetting there's somebody I'm forgetting Catholic Charity, yes, Catholic Charities got um, money in another fashion to help with some of their structural issues. So from what comes from this group is coming through, filtering through, and going back out into the community. And it's really thanks to everyone's efforts that that's happening. So um, thank you, John, for bringing that up. That was uh, good. And what, what was that group you took, the fiddle? Who was that one group you made reference to? I think you were, I'm just poking fun at you. It was some fiddle, Fred fiddle something you said? Holy okay. Harry's. That's that's. Harry's. Okay. Don't make fun. That's a that's a good group up in there. Does the it really exist? It does really exist. Well, there you go. You learn something yeah. new every day. Hey. And, and um, you know, actually, so real quick. I mean, there are a lot of food pantries around this county. There's a tremendous amount of need, uh, especially with the uh, pandemic uh, SNAP emergency benefits uh, going away. So we really lean on each other to provide that support. And uh, quick shout out for. Um, Cornell Cooperative, Single Bite, um, and even the Rotary Clubs that are all coming together to help sustain the food pantries in this county. It's incredibly important right now and, and really is you know a backstop to everything else that we're doing here. So we Absolutely. appreciate that. Absolutely. People can't move forward if they're hungry. That's for sure. Um, I would like to just, I saw him come in and I just saw him take a slug of his drink. Um, but uh, Matt McPhillips, you want to give an update on some of the things that the um, policy pillar has been working on? I know you've been... With the, am I putting you on the spot? I love to do this. Oh, well, okay. You can do it, or up to you. This, there's a lot of phenomenal work going through that's coming out of this committee that um, Aileen is bringing forth to Albany uh, with bills, and, and it ties into some of the things you're going to hear from in a little bit, so. I, th I thought uh, Rachel already did it. So anyway, thank you for having me this afternoon. I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank everyone in this community that I love 
for all they do to help combat the surge of opioid addiction. There are so many partners here today that work tirelessly to help those struggling with addiction in our community. Thank you to Wendy Brown and for, to all of you. Addiction is a disease just like any other. And that's why one of my biggest priorities has to bring, bring back resources back to our community to help increase services for those struggling with addiction. We have all worked together to secure further funding for our law enforcement and treatment through HIDA, the HIDA application. Um, and, uh, you know, basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, you know, um, I worked with addiction at Catskill Regional for many years. And I know that every one of us has someone in their life that have been addicted to drugs. And I think that having a place to go, having some place that accepts you, that doesn't make you feel ashamed for being addicted is so important. And I think this group of people are here to help our community um, to get, to make sure that we're giving this, the services to the people that need it. And um, you know, if you need some extra cash or anything, we're doing the budget right now. And I'm certainly willing to help. There's money in the budget for addiction and these kinds of services. So if you go through Wendy, <laughs> that, and if you have any asks, make sure you make them sooner than later. And I want to thank each and every one of you for what you're doing. I know <coughs> that each person in this room has probably experienced somebody that has had an addiction. And uh, we know how how difficult it is for families. So um, having people here together, that support system is vital for our recovery. So thank you very much. And you know, Aileen, I'm just going to take two seconds and, and plug a little bit more of the work that the Policy Reform Committee is doing under your leadership. You know, working to get the, uh, working with neonatal health and maternal child health and to get bills passed that address the needs of moms and babies that are born to moms that have substance use disorder and really reaching out into the community. And also one of the big things that, you know, just digging around and talking to people in the community, finding out, you know, the need for services in the community and why don't services come to Sullivan County. And I believe it was uh, Legislator Rice who did some digging and came up with the fact that the reimbursement rates are different. So through the power of your office, we're pulling people together to sit down and say, okay, money. why, yeah, we need money and why is, Orange getting a certain reimbursement rate that Sullivan County is not getting, which dissuades some people that are providers from opening services in Sullivan County. And that just stinks. It's not right. So that's what the policy committee is going after. And I believe there's a meeting coming up shortly to address that. And that is going to be, that is going to be huge. And that, the, the, uh, the one other big one, I think, is the pill press bill. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a real biggie. Yep. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, um, you know, again, the team has worked very diligently to stop the um, getting the mechanisms that actually put the pills together. If uh, the fentanyl and, and make the, the counterfeit pills that get distributed on the streets here, and it's overwhelming. I just today got another news blast. I can't even remember the name of the medication that's out. Something new now that's getting mixed into pills, and it's not xylazine, it's a newer one, um, that is just, you know, we're being poisoned, and things like this are where we get it to stop. And the, the time that we spent with the Haida folks I was gobsmacked in listening to the to the experts from the DEA talk about what they see and very upfront and you know my colleagues in law enforcement that were there can please chime in is that you know as far as the relation to gang violence and where are these drugs coming from and if it's got fentanyl in it it's coming from Mexico end of story so um, you know just a lot of really good not good things but things that we can sink our teeth into and really go after and then we have the uh, August 23rd International Overdose Awareness Day. Right. That'll so be great. I'd love to have a big march through our communities to make sure that we increase the awareness and, there are, and all of you are out there to help. And I believe that Sullivan 180, once again, is heading that up. Amanda, is there anything? I didn't see Lindsay. Is there anything that you wanted to say about that, not putting someone else on the spot? No, 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 no worries. Actually, I think it's August 31st. It's usually the last day of August, I think. Uh, but yes, we will be it is August 31st, you're right. We'll be coordinating International Overdose Awareness Day. We need to oh, everybody that was last year, the 23rd, sorry. <laughs> All good. Um, and so, yes, information will be coming out uh, to everybody. All the sellers that you'd like to be involved. 
Okay, so I don't want to, let's see, it's okay. Melissa, you want to speak about your pillar treatment programs? Sure. Uh, there's a couple of key areas that we've been looking at. Um, the first was uh, resources, getting the information out to the people that need it, to the various agencies. Um, just to speak, I know that uh, Amanda just spoke from Solid 180. They just put out their uh, most updated resource guide. Uh, we're going to be meeting. Um, again, I, every time I see her, we keep talking about it. Uh, but we're going to be looking at bringing out some information where we can kind of dial it down to adult services and children's services and things like that to make it a little bit easier for those who are seeking services. But if you haven't seen that resource, resource guide, it's a wealth of information. And that was something that our pillar uh, really wanted to look at and make sure that the resources and the information was out there. Okay, Melissa, there are hundreds right here, and there's a little list. People can sign them out. Just write your organization and how many bundles you're taking. They're all right here, and I don't want to go home. So right. And that was something that our pillar uh, is looking to do, is we promise to disseminate them anywhere and everywhere. So I will be taking a bunch. Um, the other thing that we were looking, uh, one of the areas is a warm hold on. John mentioned Unite Us. Uh, again, any time that we're working with an individual, we want to make sure that they get to the, the referring agency or wherever we're sending them and that they're getting the services that they actually need. Uh, and with that, we've worked with the hospital, we work with the jail, uh, which brings us to the next thing. Uh, we, we're using a lot of peers. Uh, to help uh, from Action Toward Independence and Independent Living that help us link these individuals to various services. They meet the individuals where the individuals are at. They come from a different perspective than a treatment perspective, which is very beneficial. Um, and I know Eve and some others are in the room, so I wanted to recognize you all. So thank you. Um, the other thing that we've been talking about uh, and we're looking to do, and um, John and I have had some sidebars, but a lot of work to be done yet was about transitional housing and respite for those who are in uh, treatment and or in recovery. Um, so that is definitely something that we've been talking about and looking at. Um, the other uh, items is the mobile service. We have a crisis mobile team in Sullivan County, um, which is going back to full hours here as of April 1st, um, which means they'll be providing services um, for outreach up until 8.30 in the evening. Um, they had a couple of persons, short staff, people that needed to be trained, things of that nature. So they're going to be up and running. Um, but what we're also looking to do is put peers back in with them for the same reason for that peer linkage and that peer connection uh, and access to various resources. So there's a lot going on there. And the other piece of what we do um, is we deal with the healing community study portion of the uh, medication opiate use disorder um, initiative. And basically what we're doing there is making sure that we're getting uh, the appropriate kits, Narcan kits into the hands through Leave Behind, with that, which uh, Chief Smith mentioned with the jail. We're working with that, uh, making sure we're looking to establish more OOPS providers. Uh, and those are providers who can acquire uh, approximately 200 naloxone kits uh, in a given month. And those can be distributed into the community and a whole host of other things through the Healing Community Study. But I'm not going to belabor all that information. Anybody wants to know anything, please feel free to give me a call. Um, and then um, <laughs> the last uh, the last piece that I, I kind of wanted to mention um, was again everything that we're doing is as far as treatment is to really address and look at um, the social determinants of health. So when we are talking about the treatment pillar, yes, we address treatment, we address access to treatment, but it's not just that. It's actually all the resources and things that people need to be successful. Because I don't know about you, when we're talking about treatment, if a person doesn't have food, doesn't have a roof over their head, the last thing they're going to want to do is sit in a group and, and worry about addressing their addiction. So there's a lot of things that we're working on behind the scenes. So thank you. Thank you very much, Melissa. Okay, and last but certainly not least, the CARES pillar, and that's Karen and Jenna. Thank you, Wendy. Good afternoon, everybody. For those who have been following any progress on the CARES pillar, uh, one thing that we have talked about is not just moms and babies that suffer from substance use disorder, but we've been talking as a community about making sure that our moms and babies are able to have care. Um, moms in the first trimester or even before they choose to get pregnant and babies all the way through um, being a teenager. So what we did is we went back to the drawing board and we identified a gap in what services we offer at public health versus what our providers were aware of. 
We did a big campaign that was released on Valentine's Day, showing love to our community. We wrote love letters to our community. We did radio ads. We did print media. And most importantly, we did office visits, where we explained to the providers exactly what services we offer and how we can help take some of those visits off of them in seeing these moms and babies. Um, with that outreach, which just was on February 14th, we tripled our referrals in the month of February, which is huge, which means we are reaching more moms and babies, which means we are able to identify if someone suffers from substance use disorder. So yes, very excited about that. Thank you. Um, moving forward with that, we looked at the most collaborative approach because every organization is busy. And I'm looking at Amanda Sullivan 180. Um, we reached out, she reached out with an ask, and we reached back with an ask, and <laughs> and she delivered. Um, so we will be hosting, uh, with, with co-hosting, uh, with at Sullivan 180's beautiful facility, a maternal child provider appreciation mixer, in which our OBGYNs and pediatric providers, as well as some of their office staff, will be invited to an evening of chatting, a cocktail, some good food, and we are hoping that our assemblywoman and our senator will also be in attendance so these providers can have a face-to-face -face with them to talk about what policy changes they would like to see in Albany in order for them to do their jobs more effectively. Not to put you on the spot, but you are here. <laughs> so I will give you details after this. I was like, oh, this is a really great opportunity. Um, so that is very exciting. We are also using some OD2A funding for advertising specifically for the Maternal Child Health Program. So thank you for that. And because we believe that the one way that we can continue to reach our community and improve our health outcomes is to raise, or I'm not sorry, raise, but to train nursing students effectively, we have partnered with Sullivan, um, Sullivan County Community College and we created a small pediatric program through public health in collaboration with them. So our nursing students can see the different populations that we serve and begin to get some education in substance use disorder um, medicine and how they are uh, visiting these moms and babies in the home. And this has been very effective. We are extremely excited about this. And we look forward to more good work. And I'm going to turn it over to Jana. Thank you. Um, so we have revised our universal referral form that will be going out to all the providers and our community partners. Um, the universal referral form came out of the original perinatal drug task force, which was the like subsidiary of this. And then we realized we needed a pillar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, it was lengthy, it was cumbersome, it was overwhelming to look at. So we've really kind of um, decreased a lot of the bulk of the referral and made it as simple as possible. Um, and that will be coming to you soon. And with that, we are working um, with one of my favorite people in the room, because here you are, QI coordinator, um, to make that digital. So uh, you can find it through a QR code, and you fill it out, and it'll be a little link to click, and it'll automatically email to our intake office. Every referral that comes through Sullivan County Public Health for nursing then gets referred appropriately to Healthy Families, Maternal Infant Services Network, um, all of the substance use facilities in the area for medical treatment. Those that don't have health insurance, we help them to get health insurance. Uh, those that have not established care, we help them to establish care. So it's more than just the skilled nursing assessment, newborn assess. It's making sure that the, that loop that is closed, as we are all doing um, in a collaborative effort. Um, so physicians, healthcare providers have been um, and will continue to be provided with our new pamphlet that really breaks down what the nurses can offer um, in the home environment. Uh, it really breaks it down and explains prenatal, postnatal, newborn, long-term care, pediatric care from zero to 18, um, and how we address the ACEs and, and that sort of thing. So um, lots of education going out. Uh, we are working together to put uh, a, a giant flyer of QR codes of all of you, everyone in this room, every community partner that we have that helps to um, battle this uh, substance use disorder within Sullivan County so that this can be a laminated giant poster in the physician's office. Doc says, you know, I really want to make that referral to uh, what was that group that, that, that helped you, that family's thing. The QR code is there. It's listed. So they just have to scan that and automatically the information is there. So coming into a new era with our digital um, usage. 
Um, we've provided education to DFS and uh, DSS staff, and again, that is part of that increase in referrals. Um, continued collaborations uh, within our agency at Public Health, um, through also with Bridgeback, Healthy Families, Early Intervention, Epi. Uh, we have an MSW that is providing home visits to these families that are at risk, again, helping them to get into treatment, stay into treatment, help with things such as filling out for SNAP, for KEEP, those things that are really stressful to families that are already under so much stress. Um, one of the, I have to give credit where credit is due, one of our uh, nurses in the epidemi epidemiology department um, came up with this wonderful idea. We have plans to have a nurse uh, once or twice a month on the bridge back van to meet with folks that may be um, challenged by substance use disorder and are pregnant or think they may be pregnant to help get them into care. Um, and having discussion with our epi team, one of the nurses said, you know, we could utilize that and be on the van as well and um, provide immunization for those that don't have, or that are at risk for hepatitis. Um, also giving the Ginios vaccine. Um, so we're looking forward to uh, continuing our collaboration with the Bridgeback folks. And I think that is it. Maybe not. And, 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 and I have this giant wish list, John, for you, so you'll be getting that soon. <laughs> it's, it's almost it, Johnny, you would think, but it really isn't, because two of the other things that we're doing, and Jana was instrumental in this also, is I sit on drug court, and Jana is coming with me to drug court to talk about the, uh, the maternal child health collaboration with CPS, because it definitely touches the lives of those people around that are involved in drug court. They need to know. And then we're also, and this is with Tom Boskett, who's from SALT that I talked about, money's going into youth outreach. Um, we're going to be meeting, and Janet doesn't even know this yet because I didn't tell her yet because I haven't had a chance to see her. We're also going to be meeting with family court and speaking with the judges and family Perfect. court to share that. So that's really exciting. So and again, I, it's pulling the community together. I did leave out, I apologize to you, and it's on my list, it just jumped over. Um, we'll be meeting uh, in next two weeks with Garnet Health to, again, streamline that referral process between nursing, child protective service, um, how to make sure that these babies are not falling through the cracks and, and we get them the care and services that they need, um, be it you know early intervention, nursing services, et cetera. So, Lots of exciting stuff. Fantastic work. You guys are really doing a fantastic job. Thank you. So now I'm going to flip it over to the Veterans Pillar. Dun, 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 dun. There you go, Ryan. So for the Veterans Pillar, the big thing we've been working on is making the community, attorneys, the veterans aware that there is a veterans treatment court here in Sullivan County. Um, after speaking with some individuals of the court, it seems like the numbers have dropped for veterans who are being referred to the court. And uh, we're finding that could be, you know, from various reasons as the veterans aren't making it into the jail. It seemed that they had said that's where their big referral source had come from. So now we're working with um, local law enforcement agencies to put flyers out to let these veterans know that there are treatment courts here for the veterans. Um, we're slowly starting to get those out. Um, and then we're working with the VA. Carl's on. He's the other uh, co-lead to get veterans down in the treatment down at Montrose if, if they need it. And we're exploring other ways for veterans to get into treatment programs that aren't uh, affiliated with the VA. That's the um, the big thing is the pillars I'm working on that right now. Uh, we're a fairly new pillar, so. And you also came to drug court. You did a wonderful presentation at drug court as well. Yes, that's where the um, the idea to get the word out about the veteran um, court kind of started from. And we're working with the Sullivan County Veterans Coalition to help get veterans rights to court if they need to, so they're not missing any of their hearings. Thank you very much, Ryan. We're very happy to have you as on the team with us all. Okay, so now it's time to open it up to questions from the audience. I'd ask you to please come up to the microphone and just tell us who you are, and you can have your pick of people up here to ask your question of. Who wants to be first? No one, going once, going twice. Anybody from the dais have any last words they want to share? Yes, I guess you get to go. Thank you. You're welcome, Senator. Uh, what one, I would be remiss if I didn't at least acknowledge, um, and also I'll use the word maybe just, I'll use the word brag just a little bit. I was able to, um, convince a very key uh, new staff member to come on to my staff 
Uh, she, of course, worked for uh, Senator Martucci, and that's Camille O'Brien. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to her um, for the work she has done, for the work that she is doing. And of course, she doesn't know this yet, but she's going to be doing a lot more work uh, <laughs> moving forward. But um, she, she was part of, I believe, the uh, uh, policy uh, pillar. And uh, I just want to say she, which is not an easy task, she updated me and got me uh, on the ground running in a very short period of time. So Camille, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. She is. She's wonderful. We're lucky to have her here. Thank you. Yes, Miss Camille. Okay, if nobody has anything else they want to add or say, it's 2.30, and this is record time for our drug task force. I want to thank you all for coming. If you're interested, if you're not on a pillar now and you're interested in joining a pillar, please um, look at the sheets that are out. You can come talk to me. You can speak to any of the pillar leads that are here. I'm sure we'll be milling around for at least another 10 minutes. And our next pillar, open uh, pillar meeting will probably be in the fall. Uh, the pillars meet every month or every other month, and I just want to thank you for your time and for being a part of the solution. Have a nice weekend.